welcome amazing agents and investors from across the country. Today is Wednesday, November 20th, 2019, and this is the uh, slightly delayed role play call number 48. We appreciate all your patience. We had a lot going on this month, so we're a little later than we usually are for these calls. Any of you that um, are on the or have been on the mastermind call and this is your first time on the role play call, we try to do it a little bit differently. Uh, the mastermind call is wide open. Anything goes, anything's open for discussions, questions, answers, stories, successes. This, we want to try to keep it in the form of a role play if we can. If you have something that, you know, is working well for you, please role play it with us and share it with the group. If you have places that you're getting stuck in your conversations and you just didn't know what to say next, this is the place to do it. And if at all possible, you know, we'll try to keep it in the form of a role play. You can be the agent or investor, or you can have Chad be the agent and investor, and you can be the the difficult seller or the seller that, you know, that got you stuck. So we are wide open, but we have up to an hour on this call, and we only have two in the queue now. So don't be shy. Hit star six and then hit one. And Chad, anything you want to say before we get started? No, I just always like to remind everybody, including my business partners, that we do archive these calls. <laughs> you can find them if you go to alltheleads.com forward slash CCVA for conference call video archive. Uh, you can also access it from the main menu of the site. <clears throat> but this is the 48th hour of role play that we'll have archived. And oftentimes when people are just getting started or just finding us, they go looking for scripts. So you can look, but you're not going to find there's one script in this entire company, and that's only because people wore me thin, but well, the reason we do this is we want to, you know, give you the, the tools to build good sales language, not give you a script that you can go regurgitate on the phone and make yourself look foolish. So if you haven't found the role play archive, if you go to that forward, allthelead.com forward slash CCVA, you'll find that you can expand by the year and then by the month. And what you'll see is a role play call at the beginning of every month and then either four or five mastermind calls. And in, in that, like there, when you open it, you'll have a video version of the call. Down below, you'll have bullet points with timestamps of what was, what was discussed, what we covered, what we role played, and also any pertinent links that were discussed during the call. And then at the very bottom, there's even an MP3 file where you can download these calls and take them with you. A lot of folks ask us about, you know, how do I get these onto my phone? So we try to give you as many formats as possible so you can, you know, consume these calls and, and build your skill set. So just if you haven't, if this is your first role play call and you find value in it, be sure and go check out the others because one thing that's really surprising to me is they're always unique. We always have, you know, different scenarios and different objections and things to role play. So it's not like 48 of the same call. It's 48 very unique, valuable calls. All right, and that not-so-subtle reference right before the call, I called Chad because I couldn't figure out what call number this was. And so just because I'm a little bit less te technologically proficient than he is, <laughs> a well, little bit don't, older. You but... don't live in the website like Kat and I do either. I was, like... <laughs> that is true. Thank you. All right, so we have three of the queue. We have uh, plenty of room for more, guys. So let's go to the first caller this week, phone number Ending in eight five six four. You're up first. Yes. Good afternoon. This is Simon Cohen from New Jersey. Um, this is actually the call that I got yesterday, so I'm going to be the uh, the seller if you don't mind. Excellent. Inbound. Inbound. Okay. So uh, is this Chad? Oh, uh, Thurman. This he was Chad. asking you, is it is it an inbound no, call or are you started, calling up? Oh, he's sorry. Okay. Go that. ahead. Go ahead. Is this Chad? This is Chad. Who am I speaking to? I want to know how'd you get my name and number? Well, I because don't I got a letter. Because I, I, I got my name is Shawnette. I got a letter. My eight-year-old daughter got a letter addressed to her saying that she's a personal representative of her uncle. So who are you, and why are you sending her a letter? So my name's Chad. We have a team of folks here that help families go through probate, and regardless of what you might be facing. So you're an ambulance chaser? 
No. Why are you lawyers with ambulance taser? What makes you think that? Because you're calling her about about her dead uncle. Actually, I was reaching out to help the family because it sounds like you're in a really stressful position, and you could really benefit from something from working with a team like ours to help you out. So, it, <clears throat> I'm not sure if there's been a clerical mistake at the county. I mean, is your daughter the representative of an estate as a minor? She's eight years old. So, right. so we don't need any letters like that from you. Estate? We have an attorney. We have all that stuff covered. Okay. Well, I want to understand what's happening so I can make sure that we, you know, we don't make you feel this way in the future. So, are you the actual rep the administrator of the estate? I said we don't need you, so don't call me anymore. I didn't call. You called me. I was just making sure that I don't right, reach out to you yeah. anymore. If, if all right, my mom mistake. It wasn't a call. It was it was a letter. So, but yeah, that, that's that's the, that's the phone call I got yesterday. And and right. I just tried to tell her the same thing that look you know we're just trying to help so you know don't know how your daughter got. Well, so I don't know how a minor got can. appointed as a personal representative unless it was somebody's name like if it was a junior senior scenario. No, did it you, wasn't. Did you? No. Yeah, and then well, she hung up on me. So I wasn't. So I wasn't. So I wasn't able to follow up with her. Yeah. So you'll win 50% of those, and the best thing uh -huh. you can do is try to blow off the steam. So you can ask what, when, why, how questions, and and just follow it with silence, and let them blow off their steam, and just kind of plug your ears. You don't need, you normally don't even need to listen until they blow off all that anger. You're not having a real conversation anyways. It's just a useless communication loop. And eventually, if you can get, if you can keep them in the conversation, they'll blow off the steam, and then you can have a real conversation. That one's pretty difficult because it seems like somebody made a mistake. Like nobody, like you can't appoint a, a minor to administer an estate. So what I was trying to get to was to slow you the hell down, so I could figure out if there was commonalities between your name and your child's name, and figure out exactly what was going on before, I, rather than just guessing my way through it. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm, <laughs> Jim, you can back me up, but I don't think minors can be administrators of estates. They don't have the capacity to sign a contract on their own, much less represent somebody else's estate. So no, I no. Would first, like, you're really offended at me, but I'm trying to help you by figuring out why the hell your daughter, your eight-year-old daughter's name is on public record as a public, as, as an administrator of an estate. And that's the first way that I saw to help you. Now, if you're just so perturbed that I, I can't even get you to communicate with me and, and you think I'm an ambulance chaser and you don't want help figuring out why your daughter's getting contacted, then whatever, I tried to help you. But I, if I can hold you on the phone long enough to, to have you blow through all that energy and all that anger, then we can have a real adult conversation and I can figure out how to help you. And right. it's, it's like I, I tell people in mastery that, that we start with that. That's the lightning strike objection. We're, we're all terrified of it, but very few of us get hit. And if you do get hit, that's usually only once. But you'll, you'll, you'll get 50% of them. And the other 50%, you know, there's just certain personality types that when they, when they are speaking from their ego, you will never get through to them. If you've ever seen a bar fight, those are those kind of people. Like they just, they, yeah. they cannot, the rational thought goes out the window. So half of them you're going to lose, half of them you'll turn. Can I give you another one? Yeah. Inbound or outbound? Um, this was, this was a, another call that I received. Okay. Let's go. Um, well, actually, this was a, this was a call that I made to them. That's right. This is a call that I made to them. So I'll go. Um, All right. So, what was your name again? Is it Thurman? My name is Thurman. Yeah, Thurman Cohen. Yeah. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi. I'm trying to reach Thurman. All right. You can reach Thurman. Hey, Thurman, my name is Chad. I had sent you a letter, but I wanted to follow up and make sure you got it and you understood why I sent it. We, um, we actually have a, a team of folks here in New Jersey that help families going through probate, 
And as part of that, we noticed you were the administrator of the estate, so we like to reach out early so you know we're here in the community and see if there's any way we can help. Is there anything you can help I got your letter. I got your letter. You didn't hear from me. I don't need you. Don't call me again. Well, I'm glad we could connect. You had a chance to say that. Is there anything I could help you with? No. Okay. Click. Well, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Nine out of ten people that we speak to in the beginning think that they don't need any help because they don't know what they don't know. They've never been through this, and they think their attorney is going to handle everything. The attorney is one of our team members. If you can imagine, they're going to deal with the legal aspects, and we pick up where they leave off. So 75% of the responsibility is squarely on your shoulders. If you don't feel that yet, you will. And our service is there to take away as much stress and maximize the, the amount of equity that the family gets to keep in the estate. So all we're trying to do is reach out and help you save time and money and make your problems our problems so you can move forward with your regular life. And we understand that it's a challenging time, and there's a million different ways to make money in real estate, but this is the one that, that helps us make the biggest impact in the community. Thank you for your call, but we don't need any help. Goodbye. Fair enough. And then she, oh, so, and then she hung up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you use the silence that I used? Uh, yeah, I did, and um, she just kept saying, you know, I, I don't need any help. I, I, I didn't call you, so, you know, basically goodbye, and then she hung up. So I'm like, hmm, okay. So a right couple of approaches you can take. Typically, so what happened, someone's pissed her off, and someone, someone called with an offer that she saw zero value in, or even she felt like they were trying to, they, were, they violated her trust. And it was probably a virtual wholesaler who was slinging around bullshit offers on the phone. And unfortunately, they muddied the water for, for, for the real professionals. These people get into a pattern where they, to protect themselves, they assume that everybody else is going to offer the same thing that person did. So you got to find, you know, try to find a way to, to shock, their, shock, like shock their system and interrupt the pattern. There's a few approaches you can take at it. You know, you can say, well, actually, that's how, like feel, felt, found. I understand how you feel. Nine out of ten of our best, best, you know, the families we help felt the same way when we first spoke. What they found is we actually provided a valuable service, and it was way different than what they, you know, what they expected me to say. Um, and you can you can be abrupt. You can say things like, oh, it sounds like you've talked to somebody who likes to talk about themselves and. You think maybe someone wants to, to steal everything from the estate. Well, this is a different kind of phone call. And then follow it up with silence. And that's about the best you can do. And if you, if you go back and listen to this, it, it's, you know, that long pause, the silence that hangs there, it's really uncomfortable. Whether you're listening or speaking or, you know, it's as, as, hum, as you know, human communication, we don't like those long, awkward pauses. And a lot of times you can really use those to your advantage. If they don't hang up, if you let, let that silence hang there and do not speak, like once you set it up and you ask a good question, let it let it hang there. Don't mess your don't mess up your own setup, and just see if maybe they'll process what if they were listening to what you said, and then they'll speak and and reveal something that is bothering them, or the reason why they do they are being so distrustful of you because you know even though they don't even know you. Right. Okay. Uh, it sounds like you, you probably have some really unprofessional competition <laughs> that is getting right. through them before you are. And right. you, you're, I mean, give it two or three months, they'll wash out. Like they will run out of money because they're not providing real value. So this probably right. won't persist for you more than a couple months until they go broke. And that's just the truth. Like it's, we have people that, that you know, and in certain markets, it gets, it's harder for two or three months. Because some idiot bought a, you know, bought, went to the courthouse and they, they are calling saying, I, 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 me, 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 and throwing around BS offers with, without even, you know, without even knowing anything about the property. They, they look at the deceased last known address. They look at the tax value, hit that at about 50%, and throw offers out there and say, it's a numbers game. And they, they unfortunately make it harder for the people who are providing real value. But fortunately, they usually wash out pretty quickly. So. You may have somebody that's, that's muddying the water for the next couple of months. It's just going to make you a stronger salesperson.
Okay. Right. Just want to let you know that I did get um, a deal last week, <clears throat> kind of off nice. Friday today, and um, it, was, it was her mother's, and now she also wants to sell her property. So I'm going to get two listings out of out of one lead. That's great. So awesome. Sure, and come back come back tomorrow, Sermon, and and we do the win of the week on our our weekly mastermind call. So can you make it tomorrow at one to throw your hat in the ring? Actually, I'm on vacation, but I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Okay. Well, it's it's a hundred bucks off your next set of leads if you if you're the win of the week. So, uh, okay. We 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 do the win of the week on the, on our weekly mastermind call. So if you can make it, please please drop by and tell us the story then. And Thurman, I was going to say if you ever if you're ever looking for a, a second job after real estate, I think acting. You you you. I actually believed you were an irate seller. You really you yeah. you portray you portrayed the emotion well. So good. That tells me you're listening because you you I, I like I said I kind of believed that you were a little bit aggravated. So you, you're listening to him, and that's that's half the battle listening yeah. and being able to repeat it back. So good job. Thurman, we appreciate you. Before before we okay. let you let him go, Jim, I'd like to hear like how did the conversation go? How did you open it? How did it go? And how did the face-to-face -face appointment go? Like, what can other people learn from from your success? We we just heard how you're getting shut down, but the the one that you that you were successful on, tell us about it. Tell us there was an outbound call, an inbound call. How did you handle it? How long were you on the phone? What objections did you overcome to provide value? Like, give us a run through of that deal. Well, it was a an outbound call, um, and she had already received a contact from a real estate agent <clears throat> to list the property. And so I started with, well, yes, I am a real estate agent, and I can list the property, but we, I'm calling you because we offer a lot more services than just listing the property. And, right. and that got her attention. And sure. from there, I was able to schedule a meeting with her, um, which was half a listing uh, appointment. <clears throat> looked at the property and that's when she told me that okay I need to sell my mom's house but then I need to sell my house too because I want to move so looked at the property and told her that you know, yeah, I can list it for for whatever but you know you have also have an opportunity here to reposition the property that would generate more money for the estate and she was really um, receptive to that possibility as well as she needed she was just confused and had too much on her plate so we started talking about you know, a senior moving service that could help, you know, declutter the property for her, uh, decide what could be sold and what could be given away. And that just kind of melted her to the point where a week later uh, she gave me the listing. That's great. So you got – so a couple of things I want to underscore here just for everybody else. Even though – and you said contact. I think you meant contract. Like the agent had already sent her the listing agreement, correct, but she had not signed it? Uh, no, I think it was just a, a, a telephone call. I think that's, she probably okay, did the so same thing did, that, that we're mean, doing. You did mean – I thought you meant contract. So anyway, she, she had already, in her mind, chosen a real estate agent, but Thurman wasn't willing to accept that, and he did exactly the right thing. It's, oh, well, that's one – he downplayed the service that that realtor provides and downplayed in your own business as in – Oh, yeah, sure, we can do that. But the bigger picture, what's more important is we have a solution for anything and everything that could be bothering you in probate. So we like to focus, you know, figure out what your goals are, and then we can tell you how we can help. And that starts with a face-to-face -face appointment where we can see the overall situation. And you did exactly that. You showed her additional value in order to get the appointment. And once you got face-to-face, -face, it was over, right? There, there's, yeah. there's, there's no competition. So right. that, that, I just want to underscore that. I mean, that's something, you know, we, we, we talk about a lot. Um, unfortunately, not many people execute it that well. They they take objections and accept them, and you didn't. You stood up to it, and you used it to your advantage. And, I mean, that's where that's where a yes, a yes starts with a no in sales. Like when you get the no, you're like, okay, now i got something to work with. So you got rejected. You turned that into your advantage. You got the appointment. And then, so to your surprise, you got two listings, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> now, yeah. What is what is your next step when when you close those two listings? What are you gonna just say thanks for the business and see you later, or are you gonna help her with other things? Well, obviously, the the next step is is referrals, you know, and and testimonials. 
Um, and she's already like, well, what about you know, her? I, I already fine. know. I already know. I already know if there's five people in this area that are possibly thinking about selling. So yeah, you know, if you help me out, I'll definitely write the word about what you can do for people. Um, when I looked at at, I put her in touch with with an insurance person because the property is vacant, so she needs vacant property insurance. Mm -hmm. um, put her in touch with a a, a person who does. He calls us uh, senior moving services. So he, he comes in and he'll remove all of the personal property, all the furniture and stuff, because you know she's having issues trying to get that done as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then from the real estate side, you know, obviously it's you know getting a professional photographer in there to take pictures of the property and, and, and basically get it cleaned out so that it shows well. But once all this is done, checks in the bank, what will you do right. then? find out what she wants to do next, which is right now she says she wants to move. So she's going to be moving out of state. Okay. but So where I'm getting, you also want to give her an opportunity to sit down with your registered investment advisor and with your estate planning attorney because she right. now, when she sees the final accounting, what she's going to see is she lost about 5% of the gross value of the estate and administration costs. So right. it's cheaper for her, especially in New Jersey, it's less expensive for her to set up a living trust and never have to go, her family never has to go through this again. And that creates mm -hmm. a referral for you to go create a relationship with a family law or with a family law or estate planning attorney. So you create, you make a referral out of her, not just expecting her to send you referrals. Make her your referral to build your referral network with attorneys and with registered investment advisors. And you may, okay. you know, if she if she needs to find suitable housing in the area, you may need to get social workers mm -hmm. involved. So you can help her find like senior house, like government senior housing, or depending on what her goals are, it may be a nursing home, maybe just a, a 55 plus community, maybe even you know government housing. There's some right. like senior citizen facilities that aren't, you know, they're not low income. They're just senior housing facilities. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We have some nice, right. nice ones here. So. Anyway, just okay. by, like just you're doing a really good job of, of sticking in there and finding ways to provide value even when you get the objections. And those are just other things like if like continue to do that from the closing table forward, keep helping as long as you can because you'll keep getting rewarded for that. She'll she'll tell everyone gotcha. she knows about you. Okay. We'll do. Thank you. Great job, Thurman. Hopefully um, take right. another 20 minutes out of your vacation. Come on our mastermind call tomorrow. We appreciate it. <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right. All right. All right. Take care. Bye. We only got two more in the queue, guys. Uh, we went a little bit long with that one, but we don't have a lot of people in line. If you would like to participate, hit star six and hit one. We've got over 100 people on the call. There must be more than two of you that could use uh, use some help. So. Don't be shy. Hit star six and hit one. And next up is phone number. Phone number. Go, go ahead, Chad. You wanted to say something? I was going to say with 100 people, I mean, you know, that was like Thurman has, he has a couple that are, you know, 50-50 at best to overcome those those objections. But I wanted to role play. the bigger part of that role play was him sharing what actually worked for him. So with 100 people on this call, I guarantee there's more success stories. And, you know, you can still come back for win of the week tomorrow. But if you've got yeah. something that's working on the phones, I mean, it's now that like this is a real community. So if, if you found good language that's working for you, step up and share. Awesome, and I heard Rebel say, "I want to role play." Go, go to it, Rebel. You're up next. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Connor from up here in Tampa area, and. Chad, I wanted to role play a little bit. Like I said, I'm new to all of this calling. I mean, I've done FISBO calls and things like that, but this seems a little more tender. <laughs> and uh, I was wanting to role play with somebody before I actually started making those calls. Okay. Do you want to start, just go through the initial conversation from the beginning? Yeah, if, if that's okay, I'll be the I'll be who I'm supposed to be. And uh, <laughs> don't be too rough on me at first. You can do that on the second part if you want. <laughs> all right. You're brave. I like it. Hey, what else can we do? Is the, the what was his name? Thurman. I mean, Thurman. Yep. Yeah. I'm, glad, yeah, I'm glad I didn't live in his area. Woo, them people are bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh my God, where does he live? <laughs> All right. So ring, ring. 
Hello. Hi, I'm looking for Chad. This is Chad. Who's this? Hi, this is Rebel. Um, I was calling today to say hi for one for starter. Hi. Oh. How can I, I help you? Off. Cut. I'm cut. I am nervous. This can be. Hold on. Start that. Mulligan. <laughs> Mulligan. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I did not start out the way I wanted to at all at all, so my tongue got tied, I was supposed to say I sent a letter, and I was contacting you to see if you had got a chance to read it, you know, all of those things, and it just didn't come out that way. That's so, all right, this is practice, Mom. <laughs> now you're brave, to, you're brave to try, and that's going to happen on the calls, too, so just have fun with it, go with it. You know, okay. start over again, go ahead. <laughs> all right, now I'm, I'm calling for Chad. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chad. Hey, Chad. This Who's is this? Rebel. Um, this is Rebel. How are you doing today? I'm okay. How can I help you, Rebel? Um, I sent you a letter last week, and I was calling to follow up to see if you actually had a chance to read that letter. <laughs> uh, if you saw my desk, I, I have I have probably 400 letters that I haven't opened. I've been out of town on on business travel, and I have no idea which letter was yours. It's very colorful. Would that have helped any at all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, when I get to the pile, I'll let you know. What uh, What can I help you with, Rebel? Nah, no, I was just calling. I know um, that I was, when I end the letter, I kind of I told you that we offered a lot of help to people in your position. I do understand that you are the personal representative. Well, I am. Okay. Well, my I work for the company that we offer um, everything that you would actually need to help you in the probate process um, from the start to the close. Um, I mean, you, I know um, it can be very, we, very hard. We, we have an attorney already, so uh, we, I think we're taken care of. Well, you do know that the attorney only handles some aspects of uh, what's going on in your probate process. We have people that handle a lot more, and that includes maybe even cleaning out your uh, the place or removing uh, some things, giving to charity, depending on what you want to do with some of the stuff. I mean, that's the start, but the attorney doesn't do that. Um, he just helps you with everything legal. I help you with everything else. <laughs> he said ask him a question I know I heard him I was like okay so um, I was wondering was if I could help you setup. out of that you're, you're doing so well but like you, you ran out of runway and all you had to do there was ask a really good open ended question so just re <laughs> okay. rewind a little bit and you, you're, you're perfect setup. Just, just when you when you get to the end of that you just kind of pause Ask me a question and then pause. Put the ball in my court. Okay. Well, I was wondering if I could set the appointment for tomorrow to come over and talk to you. That way I can give you more information. No. So this is kind of different than usual. So I'm going to, like, let's back up. You, you, you demonstrated what makes you different. You showed me that, that you pick up where the attorney leaves off. You gave me a couple of examples of things I could do. But at this point, you have no idea what my problems are, what's been the most challenging, what's what I'm struggling with. So the next step uh, okay. is ask me that question. Like, here's some of the things we do. It really starts with us understanding your situation. What's What's been the toughest thing so far? Or if you could delegate one thing today, what would be my problem instead of yours? Like, something right. like that. So back up to your examples. Okay. And it was it was a like you were doing perfect up until then, but then like once you get those examples out, give put the ball in my court and give yourself a chance to catch up and get ready for the next part, which is where you just went. You're going to go for the appointment. Oh, okay. So put that middle in there before I go for the appointment. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, and I knew that. Because we, what you're looking for is engagement. If you just go straight for the appointment, then you've built a very shallow rapport. At this point, it's superficial at best, right? So you're gonna you're about to pull me out of my comfort zone and ask me for a commitment. I know nothing about you. You know nothing about me. So we don't have a real relationship yet. And okay. like the the questions are to generate that conversation. So you want to find out what's the toughest thing or what do I want to get rid of the most or what am I struggling with? And then in in that you want to also identify is there real estate, is there a motivation to sell? If not, then turn me into a referral. 
for your your financial planner or or you know advisor or your your estate planning attorney. If yes, there's real estate, then set the and find out if you know if I have a plan for it. If I don't have a plan, what's bothering me, and then back away from it, and then set the appointment. So, we'll, okay. we'll you don't have to back all the way up. Just kind of go through where you gave me the examples, and then hit me with a good open-ended emotional question. Okay. Um, so anyway, we offer all of that. Um, what is the one thing that I could take off of your plate right now that seems to be the toughest thing for you? You know, I think that the thing that I'm worst at in life is opening mail. Obviously, Rebel, can you come open all this mail? I can start right there for you. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Um, when uh, would you was, like me to yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever been through this yourself? Um, yes, I have, and it was a very difficult time, and that's why I do try to make, a, you know, make these times better for other people. Because I'm going to tell you, you now, I had a heck of a time. I didn't have everything that I'm offering people, and to me, it's, I want to make this time as easy as possible. And that's why I'm asking you, you know, besides your letters, what is the toughest thing that you're you're having right now? Finding time to do anything. I I travel for work three days a week. I'm a regional salesman. I, my wife is also working. My kids have busier lives than we do. There's I just can't seem to actually find time to do this. And Dad handed it to me thinking, I don't know what the hell he was thinking, uh, that I would have time to do this. And quite honestly I just feel like a failure to my my family and my dad and I haven't gotten anything done so I don't I mean what can you guys do to help if I I can't even find time to do it myself how can you possibly help me well I mean okay I understand that you need time so let's let me just start with the bay the, the write-off is your uh, father's place is it filled with furniture <laughs> among other things yes okay <laughs> Well, I was trying to be nice, okay? <laughs> um, I, I, I bet he's a true man and has a bunch of tools. Uh, just, okay. just a few. There's, there's just 60 years worth of tools and oh, tinkering okay. equipment in the basement. Well, good. Okay. Well, see, that's that's something that we, like I say, we can help with that because I can help get that cleared out for you if that is something that you want me to do. I can. Uh, we can. We have to start somewhere. The attorney. You already said you had an attorney. He's doing his part. We need to find out what you want to do with the house as well. Okay, I mean, are you planning on keeping the house or selling it? Uh, uh, I mean, I guess we're going to sell it. Uh, you know, okay. my, 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 my siblings all live different places and have their own places and lives. And it's just, you know, my wife and I talked about maybe turning it into a rental property because it was left to us in the will. But... I, it, you know, I, I, I can't even find time to get over there, much less, you know, get it turned into a rental property and manage that. Right. Well, I do know that we're going to have to find a little time to maybe get over there, but, I mean, as far as cleaning out the place, that's pretty easy after you pick out what you want to keep because I'm sure there are some things in there that you do want to pass along to the family. But as far as the most part, you get everything else out. Um I have financial planners, so that way, because you're talking about renting it, so then you want to be in the position to either have a property management company, um, which I have one of those as well, um, depending on which way you want to go. i got financial planners that we can talk to first. Now, I know you don't have time, but I'm sure we could find time for this. We can even do a uh, phone call, I'm sure, if that's okay. But I do have ways to help you do whatever you want. We would just need to sit down and maybe talk about it. Um, I, I understand that, you know, you don't have time and your wife doesn't have time. Um, is there any time that we could sit down together so that we can go over some of this and see where I can start helping you since you don't have a lot of time, you're in and out, um, and I can make arrangements for times that you are in town that we can talk for a few. We won't keep you for hours. Um, and see where we can go from there to help you out with all of this because you do sound very stressed that you don't have time for all of this. So I would like to help take care of some of this for you. So when would be a good time to maybe sit down and talk with us? And, and I want to ask, is your wife part of the this process decision-making? Or is there your, you, do you have any brothers and sisters that maybe should be in on this 
uh, meeting as well. So that way we could take care of everything at once. And nobody has, they have questions, they can ask me then, and we don't have to come back for a second meeting, like, you know, just to answer questions. You know, even Jesus Christ having a birthday can't get my whole family together. We can't even seem to agree on Christmas. So I don't know how we're ever going to get together together. Um, I mean, definitely my wife and I, I mean, I'll, I'll be here throughout the weekend. We could meet. But I, I don't know, you know, obviously my, my siblings aren't here and there aren't any plans for them to be here. Okay, that's okay. We can, vir is it okay if we can uh, do a conference call or virtually? We can set it up where we can do it virtually as well. Yeah, I guess, I guess that would work. I didn't realize that was an option. Oh, nowadays anything's an option. <laughs> um, so, well, very good. How about tomorrow at 5? Would that be soon enough for you to get a hold of everybody and maybe coordinate a meeting? I don't know. Let me, I guess I should probably talk to my wife and, and try to call my brother and sister tonight. Uh, can you just okay. call me back in a day or two? Well, um, how about I set it tentative for tomorrow, and then if you don't get with them, give me a call, and we'll cancel it, and we'll set it out further. Uh, oh, okay, fair enough. Okay, great. I very much appreciate it. Right, I'm going to break. Sharon. Before I explode, we're done. You are <laughs> phenomenal. You you paid so much attention and mastery. You hit every single little point. And when I thought I was going to have something to criticize you about, you backed up and, and got it. Like, I don't know if you have a checklist in front of you. But no. Holy <laughs> My heart's going a thousand miles an hour, though. I oh, you're doing <laughs> so, so, so good. It's, like, you, uh, you need to go back and, like, listen to this. It is textbook. Everything we talked about in Mastery, you checked off each box, line by line by line. You're doing the right things in the right order. And when I tried to throw you off of your off of your 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 framework, you would come, you would circle back and flank me and, and cover it. Like, for example... I, hit, I, I let you get into the appointment, and then I hit you with the objection, or actually the decision makers. So you, I let you slip past that, and then you circled back and made sure you included the family in the appointment. And most people would have missed that. You, you're really paying attention. The other thing, like what's even more important, you might feel nervous. You're coming off as you. cool, I am so cool nervous, and casual. <laughs> no, it doesn't show. Like you're hiding it well. Like you seem very casual and very comfortable. And that's where business happens. Like when you're robotic and overly professional and sound scripted, nobody trusts you. You sound like you've been doing this for years. So you're yeah, doing I, a great job. I agree, Rebel. And just think if you're at all nervous about making the calls, you just did it in front of 108 people. Um, you're only going to have one person on the line at a time when you start actually doing it in real life. So it should be – you stepped outside of your comfort zone, but it should make it much easier to start making the calls. Oh, yeah. The I, things I, I want to point out to everybody listening, what she did, like, and I was tough on her in the beginning. Like, she she did she she missed an opportunity there to she her her own setup, but she came back and fixed it. So, she introduced herself to Probate USP. Here's who I am. Here's how I got your information. Here's why I reached out. Then she asked me that open-ended question and got me to end the dialogue. She got me to, to respond to her. And then she started, then she got real personable. If you didn't notice, like I, that's when I thought, well, hell, she's not nervous. Because it was just like you were talking to a friend. You were so nonchalant. You're like, oh, yeah, no, no big deal. We get it. We'll get that house cleaned out. Won't be a problem. And you, you, know, you ask about tools and things like that. <laughs> and you were building a real connection that you were looking for who are the decision makers, is there real estate, is there an intent to sell, and as soon as you answered those questions, you were, you got right around to the appointment. I hit you with the typical third-party deferral of let me talk to my wife, call me in two or three days, and you, you rejected that and said, you know what, let's make it tentative. And you gave me permission to cancel. You set the tentative appointment, and then by the time we, the next 10 minutes while we talk about the house and the finances, I won't be, I can't wait to meet you because you, you're making this sound so damn easy. I've got to see proof. I have to meet you to see if you're full of it or if you can really make it as easy as you say you will. So anyway, those are the main points that we teach. Like, and you just finished mastery last week, right? Yes, yes, but you taught so it very we well. Spend, <laughs> We spend two hours pulling this conversation apart line by line by line, 
and Rebel just gave us a textbook example of the of, of how to do this. So kudos to you. Like you're you're doing really well. Don't be nervous on the phones. Go go get them. Uh, this Amen. Is I talk to everybody. So I guess I, that's just I don't know. Every to me, everybody's my friend until you do something to tee me off. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the way I treat everybody. So I guess that's going to help me in this. So very good. And, well, thank you very much. Oh, Rebel, as a third party listening, I'm really hard pressed to criticize or tell you anything you could do better. The, probably the only thing that hit me when he had identified that he did have property there, and you you kind of made a generic statement, well, great, I can help you with that. It, it might have been a little more effective to say, okay, great, I've got an excellent estate sale company, and here's what they can do for you. They can come in, they can you know, sell the valuables, they can do a yard sale, and then they can donate the rest to, to charity, and then, you know, clean out what's left. You know, if you got maybe a little, once he identified what his need was, it might have created more value if you gave more specific examples of how you could help him, rather than just a generic, I can just help you with that. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with what you did, and if I, that's the only place I could see where it might, you could have been a little more thorough. Well, can I ask a question then pertaining to sure. that? Because um, I, again, did really try to listen to you guys, and I've listened to a lot of calls, and I do listen to how Chad says, one, you give a break in there. That's where I was given too many breaks and not a question. Um, the, what I want to, what I've heard before is, one, you don't want to push on the real estate too much to start with. So I don't want to seem like I'm a, you know, um, am I am I just thinking too much into that? Let me just leave it at that. Am I thinking too much into that? That. No. So Jim Jim was referencing the personal property situation. Right. So when we talked uh, about okay, the basement, okay. you I, I <clears throat> to answer your question, you handled the real estate perfectly. You actually got so far away from it. I thought you were not you weren't going to give me an option for property management. And I was going to criticize you on that, but sure as hell, you flanked around and you brought it right back up. And and I'm like, man, everything I think of that she's she's missing, she comes back and and checks the box. So you were like, you were paying so much attention, you let it go by me, but you you earmark you marked that in your head, and you made sure you come back and loop that in. So you're being very thorough. So yeah. you did the right thing by by acting <clears throat> by acting less interested in just the real estate and focusing more on the people and the situation. You're gonna. I don't feel pressured by you at all, right? And you're like, oh well, actually, you said you wanted to rent it. I, one of the things I want to do is make sure you understand your options for property management, and you came back around to it. So it's where everyone else is like just so focused on the real estate, you stepping back from it and and focusing more on building rapport and making that person feel comfortable, and then segueing back into the real estate is far more effective. So okay. I think as far as the real estate goes, you handled it well. Jim was just su suggesting that, and I don't, I mean, respectfully, I'm not sure that I fully agree because you downplayed one of my biggest stresses. You downplayed it. And you'll show me later everything you can do, and we'll talk logistics. But I was really stressed because I don't have time, and you really took that to heart. And you're like, listen, I know you're super busy. We'll take care of that for you. And Jim, I, I see your point, but I think what she may have been doing was really responding to my biggest stress, which was lack of time and complexity sure. in my life. And she wanted to simplify it. So she, I, I think you were mirroring my personality, like what you think my, you're trying to complement my busy lifestyle is what I, the way I took it. Exactly, is the way I meant it too, because you kept saying how busy you were. I mean, like you said, even Jesus' birthday, no, you can't get your family together. So, <laughs> well, like yeah. I, I, mean, like I said, you couldn't have done <laughs> Like I said, it was perfect. You couldn't do anything better. <laughs> it, it, that's, that's, a good, that's a good point, Chad, because if, if, they, if they had a bunch of stuff and they had no clue what to do with it, then maybe my answer would be better. But if they were just overwhelmed by it all, you know, maybe you didn't need to get as specific. So, you know, it, yeah, it's I nice to have. She was just yep. doing a really good job of reading me. Yep. Perfect. So, Rebel, there are a couple of people this morning in the Probate Mastery Alumni Facebook group that were asking for role play partners. Okay. And uh, you don't have to, like, I would like to challenge you to go, go to Probate Mastery Alumni and tell those people you're willing to role play with them because you're going to be a tremendous help to them, but you're also going to get rid of that, that edginess, that, that nervousness that you have. But, okay. I mean, you, you, as far as somebody who hasn't been on the phones yet, you're doing amazing. 
Like you picked up so You're much. You're literally last my week. first I'm... call at plan this, okay? I mean, literally, I don't have a checklist sitting here. I don't have any of that. It's just I listened to you before I ever did the mastery, and there's just something about you, and you can teach me. <laughs> so that's where it comes in to where it's you make it sound so easy, and there I'm sitting here going, oh my god, how am I going to do this? And I, you, you might be you better rock. at it than I am. Look out, Tampa. <laughs> 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 I appreciate that. I do. I really I do appreciate it. And I will do what you said. I'll go over to the alumni and play around. And you're a great testimonial for mastery. Everybody should take it. You know, you know, oh, I agree. Would, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank um, you. We, Thanks, guys. We, we don't have a lot of participants this week. We only have one more in the queue, but um, we're having some really good, long, in-depth <laughs> conversations. If anybody else wants to jump in. <laughs> This will be last call, hit star six and then hit one. Otherwise, next up is phone number ending in 4476. It looks like you may be last this week. Uh, yes, this is Anna Eckstein. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Can hear you great, Anna. How you doing? Okay, excellent. All right, well, I am really brand new to the system. Um, I really signed up just a few days ago and um, just wanted to give you a little bit of a brief overview and I have two questions. And some of them maybe it's already on the side, so if you can let me know, I, I will go through. I just didn't have a chance to do that yet. So um, I'm basically, I'm in Naples, Florida, so I'm not too far from Tampa, by the way. <laughs> and um, so I really was kind of excited to listen to uh, the conversation that you guys had before in um, Tampa. But I have, um, so I'm currently a senior real estate agent. I'm about 13 years background in the Naples area, selling about 25 homes on the buyer side pretty much each year, and uh, just really trying to go rock star for the listing um, and uh, just get in recently to the Vulcan 7 for the expired about a month, 30 days ago and um, as much as a couple of days to this system. But a um, few questions that I have is, um, like with expired, I realized that there is actually a script um, for you know objections, and that's what the biggest uh, the the biggest problem is with any of this approach is objections. That's how people approach. And with all due respect, with the agent that actually had the role play, she was awesome. But I feel like it um, based on conversation. She was very weak on a beginning statement when she tried to approach you. Um, that person, if that would not be a role play on the phone, he probably would hang out before she would have that excellent conversation. Do you agree with me in any way or I missed something? No, I think you'll find, I think you'll change your own mind once you get on the phones. If you go after these like a bulldog like you do with FISBO and expired, you'll get hung up on more often than you'll get engagement. Where <clears throat> the way she handled that <clears throat> was the way she was taught, which is based on, you know, what we teach in probate mastery, which is based on my six years experience doing this um, in my business and helping many others. And it's, it's, it's intended to really differentiate you from everyone else. So if, if anyone else is calling going, hey, I, I noticed you're the administrator of an estate and 123 Walnut Street is not on MLS. Have you guys thought about selling that property? Like that's what other people are going to be doing. And it, it's you're so you're one hundred percent focused on the people and the situation and 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 the way we teach it until you have rapport and then you find a convenient segue into real estate and the way she did that was using personal property so it's it's a bit of a sneaky way to start the real estate conversation so they don't feel threatened or driven inward like they do with other people who are just calling selfishly talking about their business and their but real estate service. She was really start talking about the letter. That's what got me really kind of confused about the colorful letter and all of that between. Yeah. So she was, she was, you know, just layering in her personality. And I actually like what she did. She made a joke about a colorful letter and like she was, she was showing me that she was human. But the reason we mentioned the letter in the beginning, it, it typically folks are following their letter with a phone call, and the letter is the first differentiating piece because most everybody else is sending a we buy houses or we're amazing listing agents kind of collateral where we're sending, you know, we provide you options. So the letter is different, and it can really warm up the phone call. What we oftentimes find is people are getting 20 or 30 pieces of mail 
but the one that they got from our subscriber really stood out to them. It's it's the one that came in a greeting card envelope and it got opened and it looked way different than everybody else's. So if you're if you're you know if you're not comfortable with that, you can simply cut that script out and just jump right to the point and say, you know, hi, my name's Anna. I've got a team of folks right right here in Naples to help families who are going through probate. A lot of times that you know family members are out of town and just can't get down here to deal with everything. So regardless of what could be could be the problem, we have a solution. And before you say anything, I, I'm aware that you have an attorney and I just you know just understand our service picks up where the legal service leaves off. So we're a complement to what the attorney's helping we, you with. We consider them a member of our team. So what's what's the first thing you guys need help dealing with? And lead and then you know that open any questions. So if you want to cut the letter part out if it's not comfortable for you, you can certainly do that. We just find that it, it gets, it's more of a warm call than a cold call. You have a reason. So, you know, we, we actually, you know, in the probate USP, the most common objections that, that come through if you're, if you're weak on the phones is, wait a minute, who are you? How did you get this number? Well, what do you want? And if you can defeat those objections before they arise by plowing through it kind of the way she did, I sent you a letter, had a few minutes in the office, wanted to make sure you got it and you understood why we sent it. Um, you know, we have a team of people that can help families going through probate, yada, yada. What's been the toughest thing for you so far? If they try to interrupt you, power through it. It's rare that they'll hang up on you in the middle of that. And if you leave that silence hang, they'll, they'll be, there'll be a, few, a few seconds of silence where they're processing everything you just told them because it's very different than anything they've heard from anyone else. And they're going to go, okay, her name's Anna. She said she went to the courthouse. And then oh my, she asked me a question. Uh, uh, I don't know what's the toughest part. The whole damn thing's tough. And then, boom, you're in engagement. So it's, if, you've, if you've gotten really good at FSBO or expired, it, it's, it, there's a bit of a learning curve here. It's an adjustment. Because with FSBO or expired, you know before you call what the address is, what the specs on the home are, that there's a strong motivation to sell. Like you already know those things. You have to back up a few steps here, and you have to learn those things in an organic conversation before you go through. If you assume and you jump right in there with those assumptions, it'll backfire on you more times than not. Gotcha. I, I mean, I see the point now, actually, from the letter. The letter is really a conversational piece of kind of getting them to feel comfortable with you than anything else, probably, at the end of the day. because. Uh, so. Can I ask you another question? So as far as, um, like, I notice, uh, and I notice with the expired, you know, like with anything comes the script, and some of the scripts is been modified by, you know, the agents who is doing a really good conversion rate. Um, and uh, I even noticed, like, Vulcan 7 has a script already for all of that stuff, but the script is, like, you know, I wouldn't approach, let's say, that way because it's more on aggressive way, even for the expires, the way how they say, um, mm -hmm. the step wise. Uh, but I did take um, from the coaching actually that I have from my coach um, with a script that actually has a quite good uh, conversion rate, uh, <clears throat> just to get you know people engaged in the conversation and kind of get you know um, you know trusted and all of that between. So my question is this, do we have available something like this from the agents who uh, personalize the script that actually has the good conversion rate for the conversion rate for those agents? Not necessarily would be for another one, you know, but just in general, kind of the interview about that, like objections and initial script. Sure. So considering everything I just said, it, it is next to impossible to script this out where it can actually be effective to hand it to somebody. There is one script that I did write because I, I had enough pressure from customers. You can find that in the, uh, uh, I think, video three of Fast Track Training. When the video finishes, the, the download pops up below the video. So the initial training that you saw the first time you logged into your subscriber portal. Um, you can also find that out on the Facebook group and all the leads mastermind under files. There's an outbound probate script. You'll see it's heavily disclaimered. And the, the, because this is a different situation, we, we have to identify is there real estate, is there a motivation to sell, what are the other problems involved. If you're going to provide real options, you need to have a real conversation. So 
I can typically take a scripted salesperson and wrap them around the axle within 30 seconds. And they get marble mouth, they lose control of the conversation, and when I hit them with objections, they freeze. Where <clears throat> with somebody like Rebel, she was taught not to use a script and not to expect one. So she focused on building real sales language. And what you saw in her role play, she was actually reading my personality to the point where she was downplaying certain things based on the responses that I gave her. And that's what we really want to teach you. We want to teach you to like focus on the people and the situation where what are the emotions driving the responses? Like what's the behavior? What's, what's, why are they saying what they're saying? And how can you appeal to that? by being the solution to their biggest, you know, their big, their most negative emotion. So there is a script there. I gave you a couple places to find it. What I would rather see you do is download the probate seller interview sheet that you'll also find after video three in probate fast track and then go back through these role play calls. And it's that's a conversation framework. So it doesn't tell you what to say. It tells you what information you should be getting and in what order to make you most successful. And for me, you know, I kind of developed this over over about a three-year period, and I maintained a 6% conversion rate only doing the sending direct mail and dropping ringless voicemail. So without even being a solid outbound prospector, I was able to, to achieve and stay on pace with 6% conversion the entire time I was done this. We have customers that are converting at 20 to 30% in smaller markets. You know, they might get get... 30 leads a month, but they're closing six deals consistently, and they are following this approach. They're not trying to it's script unbelievable. it. It's unbelievable. Even 6%, I'll tell you this, it's just unbelievable. Average conversion rate is, yeah. you know, it's a percent over low for any, you know, lead stuff like that. Yeah. Well, an average, so just, just so you understand, I mean, average, like across the board, an average conversion rate is about 2% for our subscribers. But even at that, most people are making between a 1,500 and 2,000% return on investment. But what I'm saying is people who really take this to heart and they really do want to make a difference and they really trust a proven system that we teach, they far exceed 2%. Usually, usually in the first 90 days, they, they start beating that conversion rate and they hold pace. Um, you know, between, I mean, we have tons of folks that are, you know, 10% or above. In, in smaller markets. Now, if you're in a, a market, you know, with super competitive with 300 leads a month, you're probably not going to convert it at, at 6 or 10 percent. But 2 percent is a real good living. It's a huge return on investment. But anyway, no, that's, that's kind of the, prin the principle behind what we do and why this sounds so different than what you've heard in other coaching companies or other niches. And trust me, I've done it wrong just about every way you can. That's how I know what, you know, what is most effective. And I've had the opportunity, you know, I stepped out of production in 2015, and I was terrified I would lose my edge and lose credibility, but I actually got the opposite. So instead of working in one market on a few dozen, you know, several dozen deals a year, all of a sudden I was working in hundreds of markets on thousands of deals a year. So I've been able to hear the objections coming from New Jersey, where the tough ones come from, and California, where it's super competitive. And so it's the, the conversation has evolved over the, the you know the history of our company to keep up with what's actually happening in real time. We also have an ISA center in house in Florida, so you know we hear we know the objections, we we know how the conversations are going, and and everything we teach is based on real world experience it's not just theory it's it's put in the put into play so uh, all that said if you can just trust the process I, I think that you'll find this is it's it's I would say no less than five times easier than FISBO or expired and these are the best clients you'll ever have like they're non-confrontational they once once they see you as a leader they will follow you through the whole thing and take your advice and uh, these are the easiest transactions you'll do as a listing agent. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm really looking forward because I actually, in general, about 90% of my sales a year, it's really second home, retired people in it. So I already currently, in, you know, in currently similar, not quite similar. But anyway, awesome. one more question. Uh, one more question that I actually have. I was just curious uh, how the attorney works. Are they generally hired the attorney from Florida, or you think his attorney would be go from different state? I would assume it would be from Florida since he's in Florida, right? 
Yeah, typically your, your attorney is going to be in, in the same county that, that the, the probate was filed in. Now, what you're being, being in Naples, what you're going to find a lot of is, is what's known as ancillary probate. So probably New York, New Jersey is where the primary probate will be filed. But because they owned a second home, then there'll be a, a you know another probate filed in the county where they own that asset. Now, you might find more common the flip side of that because you have a more a wealthier clientele in that in that county. So they may have moved their residency to Florida to save on income tax, but and then they they technically their second home is still up in New Jersey or New Hampshire or you know wherever in New England they came from. That's a very common scenario. So the primary probate could be filed in Florida, and then there'll be an ancillary probate in whatever their home state was before they moved for retirement. And those can be even, you know, even easier because the whole family is back there where the, you know, the, the second home is where they moved from before retirement, and they don't, you know, they don't have the contacts in Naples. They don't have time to come down here and, and deal with everything. So what you like just educate yourself on that and what you what you you'll probably find a lot of opportunities to refer listings up in New England or wherever you know people are retiring to Naples from. So they'll have their second home which you can help them with and then you'll have like if you ask good questions and and really focus on the bigger picture of what all they own you can create a lot of referrals for agents in other markets and in in those markets you know those the markets that are feeding Florida right now, we have a lot of subscribers. I mean, you heard the opening of this call with a gentleman from New Jersey. And in my experience in Florida, <laughs> it's 50% of the state is from New York, New Jersey, or New Hampshire, right. I think. But do we have okay. an actual referral system on a site to refer to the agents who are actually familiar with? Because like, I have referral programs throughout in variation from, you know, local ones to non-local ones but this so is the, the like best way to find somebody who's qualified at the kind of at the same level you are is to look within our group because you know what we teach is very unique our approach Facebook, is different right? than, yeah so we have a facebook group called all the leads mastermind and we've got about I seven thousand but i didn't be in a yeah, pool so yet so. That's a that's a carefully curated group. Like we make sure that only real estate professionals who are actually active in the business are getting into that group, so they can provide real value. So if you go, if you have a referral, you can jump in there and and find somebody in that market and connect and and you know, just just create your own referral there. We're we're not trying to make a system out of it where we take any commission. We just want to know that the community is getting the service they provide, and you guys have a good platform to to share business. No, I appreciate okay. that. It definitely All makes right. sense. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. We have one more person that jumped in the queue, guys, so we're going to go a little bit over time today. And the last up this week will be phone number ending in 6048. You're up last. Yay. How are y'all? No pressure. We saved the best for last. What do you think? I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Side note. Chad, I changed my battery on my uh, <laughs> on my <laughs> The fire. beef is gone. <laughs> the beef is gone. Look, that's the only way you can remember me. At least that was my little, you know, memory um, <laughs> identification piece. But um, so I really appreciate the call that you have taken. And some of what I wanted to ask kind of got answered. Um, in regards to the role playing, I have a, a client who um, we just we were talking about. Her mom passed away. She actually it's a case, so there was an attorney. Um, it was wrongful death, and she saw my post on Facebook saying that I am now probate certified. And a lot of people gave a lot of good response and reached out. I even had some agents that reached out, and I shared you all's details with them too. Um, but I feel like I almost kind of left some things on the table, and I just wanted to see um, should I revisit this conversation with her. Um, her mom was, was, was killed. She lives in San Antonio, and I'm in, like, Sugarland Houston area. Um, and because I know you, you definitely, you all hone on not just focusing on the real estate, but what other services um, can I offer, her mom had no real estate. 
and they're in San Antonio. Do you still think I would fit in as some as a you know a resource for them because I'm not familiar with the San Antonio area? So I kind of wanted to see maybe I don't know if you want to role play that or you want to answer that. Well, I'll just I'll answer it. I mean, there's probably not. You know, it, it, this is someone you care about, like you have a, have a relationship with them. Yeah, you like me. Oh. You're, you're breaking up there. Can you can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you can can you hear me now? Now we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. Um. Yeah. She she's been a client of mine for years, and so she's been sharing the situation that when it happened last year, and they're going through, you know, the lawsuit with the company and all this other stuff. And I feel like, gosh, if, if I'm a probate specialist, how can I help her and what can I do or okay. what can I suggest? Well, no, that's, that's what I need to know. So, I mean, this is obviously if you really impress her and provide value in this stressful time, then that will ultimately come back to you as a future transaction. Would you agree? Like she, I would. She's a, rec she's a recurring client. Yeah. So because of that i think it's worth your time to find a registered investment advisor that she can she can trust in san antonio that she can sit down and say you know when when this is all settled out and i get the distribution what can i do with it what are what are the tax implications like any of those finance related questions set her up with a good registered investment advisor or an ria in that market the other thing is you can say, you know, listen, you know how stressful this has been and, 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 and you know, yours, this kind of snowballed out of control. It's important to me that you guys don't ever have to go through this again. Would, would that be okay if I could show you a way to not ever have to live through this, Any anyone in your family? All yeah. right, great. Listen, we, I know it's, it's, it's not here in my market, but I, I, I have connected with an estate planning attorney over in San Antonio. If you would rather do it here, we can do it here with my guy. If you would rather do it there, I've, I've vetted somebody already because I, I wanted you to have the option. So what's important to me is that you at least have the opportunity to sit down and understand how when, when your, your estate is, you know, when, when your family goes through this with your estate, you're not going to lose 5% of your legacy to the cost of administration, and your family is not going to have to go fight through this like you are right now. So what, would it be better for you to meet with an attorney in San Antonio or, or here in Sugarland, And then let her choose which one. But if you, if you go out of your way to find a, a good registered investment advisor and a good family law attorney in that market and give her a choice, is that going to mm -hmm. show well for you? Like is she sure. prepared for? Yeah, she respects my opinion. She actually lives here where I'm at. It's just that her mom and her siblings are in San Antonio. So she's the oldest yeah. of five siblings. And so but there's no there's, that no, there's no real tangible assets like in San Antonio, right? No. Yeah, so I would probably just refer her to your folks right there at home because that's okay. going to give you a, like an A-plus referral. So if you're not aware, estate planning attorneys aren't allowed to directly solicit for business. So they rely okay. on workshops, referrals, you know, things like that, like broadcast marketing. So if you can get her to say, yeah, you know, I really, whoever has to deal with my, my estate, I don't want them to go through this. If you can get her to raise her hand, then you've created an opportunity to really connect with an estate planning attorney in your market and say, you know, okay. listen, I know referrals are important in your business, and I want to, I, like, I'm looking for a partner that, that will, you know, provide a matched level, a matched or a higher level of service than I provide. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about what we do and see if we're a good fit. And if so, I've got a referral for you today. Then the, yeah. an attorney is you cannot resist having that conversation, right? So yeah. get her over there, and 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 that way you you started the relationship with the attorney with value. You've given the highest level of service to your your client that you can, and do the exact same thing with the registered investment advisor. Find one find one that you can trust reach out the same way and say, you know, listen, this lady's unfortunately going through a tough probate. Um, I'm looking for a registered investment advisory firm that I can partner with and I can trust with people that are already in these stressful situations. Um, mm -hmm. I have a referral for you today if we're a good fit. I'd just like to kind of tell you a little about, about what our service does so you understand and then see if, if this is the right referral for you. And again, okay. you're, 
value and, and first. So, absolutely, and I love that. So my second thing is, um, because this is so new, I have not put my marketing out there, but I am working with Toby to try to get my site going so it can be more explanatory. Um, I also have a situation where I haven't bought leads, but the people around me are experiencing, you know, loved ones that are passing on, and I kind of wanted to see, you know, how maybe we can role play in regards to me um, asking them questions for that referral, and is that kind of stepping over the boundaries of having that referral? No. What's, give me one example. What's the relationship okay. of these people so, um, like, between and you and those? For those, you know, who, for just for the fact, um, my second business, I've been a hair stylist for over 25 years, and so we have a lot of conversations in the styling chair. Um, one of my clients, she's a senior, she's older, and a lot of her friends are passing on. Um, her brother just passed on. She dabbles in real estate a little bit within the family, but um, she knows that I'm actually taking, that I took this course and agreed to kind of help me out with role playing as well but I'm struggling with how to say or if I should say I don't want to sound like I'm digging for a deal but what's the best way for me to um, offer or let it be known what I can offer for them to say hey I have someone that may be able to help or you know so or you, I you took mastery away? and got certified right I did get, yes so that's probably what I, and I'm trying to, I'm sorry to rush you, but we're past our time on it. I'm I know. trying to I know. speed it up. Okay. So I, I would use that as your entrance point. And, you, you know, what's what's really great about your situation is you have a real relationship with these people. And right. you're trying to find a way, you're like, you've, you've done that. That's the hard part. You're trying to find a way to respectfully convey the value that you can bring without them Absolutely. feeling like they're being sold to, right? Yeah. So next time you have the conversation, let it happen organically. It sounds like you see her, what, once a month or once every few weeks? Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm here. Hello? Uh, hello? Jim can, Jim, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can. Yeah, for some reason we lost her. Um, well, hello? Let's, I want to finish. She can get this on the recording. Will you mute her out? Because I, I, do, I don't want her to miss the yeah. point. Yeah, I did. Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, I thought I did. I thought I did. Hang on a minute. Okay, she's muted. Okay, sorry to mute you out when, when you're trying to get us. But so what what I was going to suggest, since you do have the CPE designation and, and you've built a relationship to the point where that person knows that you are raising the bar for yourself and, and, and you know, further educating yourself, I would make that the entry point back into the conversation and say, oh, my gosh, you know, Stella, I'm, I'm so excited about what I learned in this class. I, you know, Chad, is, you know, he's got experience working with families in all 50 states, and really, like, the core of what they taught was how to really focus on the people and understanding their situation in order to lower the stress and maximize the, the value of the estate. So I, did, I, I almost can't wait to get out there because I feel like I'm already saving people money. And then just wait for her response and let it happen as an organic conversation. But the two big points aren't, I'm really smart and I'm really good at the A, B, and C. It's I learned a way to save families money and lower their stress, and I just can't wait to get started. And a natural response will be, oh, honey, that's so great. Well, listen, uh, my friends are dying left and right. The next one that happens, I'll have them give you a call. You know, th then let that let it happen that way. So don't feel don't don't feel apprehension to get back in. Just focus on on why the training was so valuable and, and why you're better equipped now than you were last time she was sitting in your chair. And really, the two big points that we always want to underscore is we reduce stress and we maximize equity in in the state so families can can protect the leg you know can preserve the legacy they've built over time. And that should Perfect. get your attention. Perfect. Well, guys, this was we made you wait a couple extra weeks for the call, and this is our longest call ever. It's kind of interesting. We had fewer participate, participate uh, people actively participate, only a handful, but it was by far the longest call. We really dug in deep to a lot of different areas. So I want to challenge all of you, like I always do. You know, thank you for being here. We started out with a hundred people. Seventy-five percent of you hung on till the end. We really appreciate you being here. You know, take one idea, one thought, one thing you learned on or heard on today's call, 
go out and put it into practice and come back tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern and share the results with the group. Thanks so much, guys. We will talk to you on the Mastermind call tomorrow. Make it a great day. Take care.